Hey everybody, welcome to Trail Sage, and today I wanted to talk about the new drop that's at Blue Mountain. And if you haven't been to Blue Mountain in a while, oh man, it is an absolute treat. So there's the Empire, Upper Empire Line, and if, if you've been there in the last two years, then you're probably familiar with the first drop. I think it's, uh, I think it's eight foot up and then probably 10 feet out and you kind of have to climb to get into it, to drop into it, and uh, it is buttery smooth. But if you're familiar with that drop, the next thing is, you know, you go into the turns, you have that step down, and then you used to have to do this step up move into this S turn to get into the first set of big jumps. Well, they got rid of those S turns, which is awesome, and instead, they put in a new step up that takes you into this massive drop. And I talked to one of the builders and she said that the dimensions are 11 to 12 feet up and about 20 feet out. And I have no idea if those numbers are accurate, but I can tell you that this thing is big. And and uh, <laughs> I did the typical thing of like, I saw the Instagram post and I was like, ah, yeah, it looks like nothing. And then you get there and you're like, holy moly, it is substantial. The nice thing is there are two places that you can kind of pull off to kind of get a good view of the drop. And one of them is a, a nice trail that kind of, if you are looking at the drop, there's a trail that goes off to the left. And it's a great place to kind of pull your bike off to the side and then you get a nice vantage point of this drop from the side. And if you're really lucky, hopefully you'll get to see some people go off of this thing. I'll give you an idea for the speed because the speed is probably the trickiest thing to this drop, which is why I kind of wanted to make this video. But what is that appropriate speed? And we were lucky enough that when we got to Blue Mountain, uh, I had saw one of my buddies, Phil, who works there. And he said, if you clear the step up, then you don't need to put a pedal stroke in. If you clear it, that should be enough speed to get over this drop, which I, I gotta tell you, feels very uncomfortable. When you do it, you're like, this is way too slow, but it is literally the, the perfect speed. The issue becomes, well, if you're sessioning the drop and you don't have the luxury of doing that step up, how many pedal strokes do you need? So I had mentioned the pull off to the left. There's actually another pull off to the right and it's it's before the drop. So if you go 50 yards back from the drop, um, almost parallel to that step up, there's a nice little dirt pad. And what's really great about this dirt pad is if you look to the left, you can actually see if there's somebody coming down the trail. So you, you don't have to worry about like kind of pulling off and then like, you know, cutting somebody off that's like in the flow of the ride. So if you look to the left, there's nobody coming. You can kind of pull off this dirt pad and, and session this drop. So how many pedal strokes do you need uh, from this dirt pad? And what I found was, I think about three or four pedal strokes should be the perfect amount of speed to get you off of this drop. And it, the, the, again, I'm a pretty small rider, so depending on your weight and whatever and what gear you're in, that, that could change a little bit, but three or four pedal strokes should be plenty of speed to get you clear of this drop. Can you oversend it? Absolutely. In fact, um, the builder that I was talking to, uh, she was the first to guinea pig the drop and, and she actually oversent it. She even way too many pedal strokes oversent it and actually crashed. So it is possible to overshoot this drop. And it's certainly over, uh, possible to undershoot this drop, which uh, my buddy Dan and, and Terry had the misfortune of undershooting the drop and kind of cased it. They were absolutely fine. It was no problem, they, they, they cleared it. But yes, if you are coming off of that dirt pad, three or four pedal strokes, don't touch the brake, that'll send you buttery smooth. And the best part about this drop is instead of fighting those S turns to get into that first jump, if you do this drop and you catch the landing, that should be plenty of speed to get you over that first jump. And my buddy Dan, who's a, a much better jumper than I, he said that he actually had the brake check a little bit, uh, otherwise he was overshooting it. I'm much lighter than him, and I found that the coming off the drop was the perfect amount of speed to clear that first jump. Again, it's probably gonna depend per rider and, and your jumping skills, but just be aware of that, that you might have to brake check, or it might be perfect, but yes. Big kudos to Blue Mountain Bike Park for continuing to improve this place. I, I gotta tell you, every time I go every year, I feel like they're adding something new. And this drop was a fantastic addition. Again, getting rid of those S turns, so now you don't have to like crank to get into that first drop. I mean, what a fantastic addition. It's a lot of fun. I hope you found this video helpful. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button. If you have any feedback or questions, leave them in the comments below. And if you wanna see more content like this, feel free to subscribe or even better, join me on Patreon for some extra perks. Thanks for watching.